Hello everybody, this is Lenny Kaiser, Ableton Live Certified Trainer, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a time-stretching type of effect. Um, I've found this very useful for production and performance environments, and I just think it's a really cool effect, so I'm going to show you how to use that today. The way that I'm going to create this time-stretching effect is by the use of two delays in Ableton, the simple delay and the grain delay. So, I'm going to give you an audible example first so that you know what we're going to be creating. The first step in doing this, I'm going to start from scratch, is to go into audio effects and grab a simple delay here. Now I want to change a couple of parameters on this before moving forward. So I want to link the delay time, so that's linking the left and the right side so that the same effect is going to be happening across the stereo spectrum. Uh, I want to unsynchronize the time and this is so that I can get to a smaller value than I could with the synchronized delay times and I want to set this to 22 for now. And the reason that I want to set it to 22 milliseconds is because anything past about 25 milliseconds, we start to hear and interpret that as an audible delay. And so we want to stay below those parameters and we can create this kind of cool time stretched effect. So I'm going to want to set my feedback to 70%. I'll leave my wet dry at about 50% right now. So let's hear what subtle effect this has now. So now I want to grab the grain delay and I also want to change a couple parameters on this. So I want to change the frequency to 1 hertz, the pitch to 12, and the dry wet ratio I'm going to start at 0. I also want to turn the delay time synchronization off and change that to 22 milliseconds. So I'm going to highlight both of these by holding shift and then clicking on both of them. And I'm going to use the quick key command G to group them. And this groups them in an, into an audio effect rack. And the benefit of that now is if I click the macro knob section, I'll be able to map multiple parameters to one knob. So those parameters that I want to map are going to be things like turning the devices on and off, changing the delay times, and changing the wet and dry ratios. So let's start with linking the device on and off to the macro knobs. So I'm going to right click on the device on off and say map to macro one. I'm going to do the same for my grain delay here. Uh, I want to link my delay time on the simple delay. I also want to map the wet dry value. And again, I'm mapping all these to macro one. I'm going to map the frequency of the grain delay, the wet dry of the grain delay, and the delay time of the grain delay. So now you can see when I move my macro knob here, I change multiple parameters. And this is super cool because you can really create some awesome effects. Um, using this functionality. So right now, if we listen to our effect, it's a little bit crazy. Both devices don't turn on until about 64 there or 12 o'clock on my knob. So I want to change these so that I have more control over it and it's more of the desired effect that I want. So I'm going to go into the macro control knob map mode and I'm going to change some of these values. So the first one that I want to change is the simple de simple delay device on. I don't want both of these effects on 100% of the time so I'm going to set the minimum value of this delay to 1 and the maximum to 0 and this is basically saying at any point past 1 the device is on and you can see it turning on when everything lights up. And when it's at a, a value of zero, then everything is off. 
So I'm also going to want to change my delay time. I'm going to change it to 22 milliseconds minimum and 2 milliseconds maximum. So it's actually going to be working in reverse and causing the delay time to shorten over time. And again, I want to keep this under 25 milliseconds so that I don't hear an audible delay. I'm going to change my wet dry ratio on the simple delay to starting at 50% and going up to 100. Now for my grain delay with the device on, I'm going to leave it at 64 and 127. And this is so that the grain delay doesn't even kick in until about 12 o'clock, which is going to help out with this effect. I'm going to leave my frequency at 1 hertz, going up to 150, and my dry wet value starting at 0 and going to, say, 35%. I'm also going to change my time delay to 22 milliseconds and going down to 2 milliseconds. So now, let's have a listen to our time stretch effect. Cool, so there you have it. That is how you create a time stretch effect in Ableton Live using the simple delay and the grain delay. I'm Lenny Kaiser, and thanks a lot for tuning in.